In this next lecture, we're going to have a look at the King Code of Corporate Governance. But we have to put it all in perspective to see what he's banging off about. So it works like this. Set up a spectrum. And we say there's a line. And if you never obey a rule, you will go to jail. If you give away all your money, ultimately you'll go insolvent. And somewhere between this, we've got to find a place where we can all live comfortably together. Now, the first requirement is to obey the law. That's the benchmark in terms of the Companies Act. What King 3 is trying to do is to try and bring in an apply or explain principle which takes the law a lot further in what is expected of companies. And King 4 will take that even further. That draft is out at the moment. Let's see what finally happens with it. So, we put that in context. What's King on about? He's saying stakeholders of today, and we've identified them, are looking at the quality of a company's product or its service. And they are also looking to have trust and confidence in that company. It is evident that the primary focus is still on the shareholder. We still have to make a profit. We can't give it all away. Nonetheless, the shareholders' interests are not tantamount above everything. They are not the only things that the directors should be looking at. Accordingly, there is a trend in the new report to look at a mandatory operating and financial review where one looks essentially at the cost of making profit. This increases transparency and is very useful for the stakeholder to look at what the shareholders are doing. Then the development of more open and transparent reporting develops a cooperation between shareholders and the stakeholder. Right, so what are the principles that they're trying to achieve? They're trying to say a director has a duty of care and skill. He's out there to make a profit. But there is also a fiduciary relationship, a relationship which means that shareholders have to guard the interests of the company. A corporate practice which is generally adopted is often adopted by the courts. Now have a look at that. That is incredibly important. You can't be sued for not going in line with King 3. But King 3 is best practice. So, if you were facing a legal suit in terms of the Companies Act and you hadn't followed King 3, then you would have a problem with your Section 76 fiduciary responsibilities because you have not followed the code of best practice. The improvement in standards set in corporate governance practices are therefore for the benefit of to all companies, their shareholders and in fact their stakeholders. So what you are seeing is that where directors do not follow good corporate practice, they could ultimately become liable at law. So now let's have a look at the legislation. Legislation of companies can be governed in, by the Companies Act or if you're in a public organization by the Public Finance Management Act and the Municipal Finance Management Act. Now there have been a lot of people saying out there that King 3 has not bound the public sector. Now, this is one of the things that they are seeking to redress in King 4, to make everybody subject to the code. So, what are the principles of the report? The report is placing great emphasis on leadership, sustainability and corporate citizenship. Notice that is going a hell of a lot further than simply saying, you must go out there, make a profit and obey the law. The importance of the concepts of sustainability and social transformation are highlighted. This leads to the concentration of the effect of doing business on society and the environment. In other words, it's not just a free-for-all. One must take into account the cost of doing business. The concept of sustainability is linked with the evaluation of ethics and the improvements of ethical standards in business and in the community. When one looks at ethics in the past, ethics were not contained in any Companies Act. That was an expected behavior, but if you didn't have any ethics, you couldn't exactly be charged for it. 
Now we see ethical behavior coming more and more to the fore. The success of companies in the 21st century is likely to involve the natural environment. We all know that resources are limited. Then we have to look at the social environment as well. We cannot simply carry on making profits without seeing what is going on in society. Then we also have to have a look at the political system and the global economy. King 3 is placing enormous emphasis on the integrated report. That it sees as the nexus between the company and society, whereby it can explain what it's actually doing. So now let's have a look at some emerging trends. There is no reference to alternative dispute resolution within the Companies Act. King 3 is saying, we've got to look at that. We can't live by the old adage of it's every company's right to take everything to court or every person has their day in court. That's very expensive, it's very obstructive, and they're saying, if you've got a problem, try and sort it out first before getting spending massive amounts of money on legal fees, etc. King 3 also looks at risk-based internal audit. That expression doesn't appear in the Companies Act. It says companies must be more reliant on their internal controls, which is what the internal audit function is there to assure. Now, many years ago, those who can't in the world of accounting were transferred onto internal audit. It was a very uh, pedestrian process of tick and bash. The internal audit today is going a lot further in identifying the risks that a company is prone to. Then comes the issue of IT governance. The Companies Act doesn't tell you how to govern your IT, but we know that if there is a major IT breakdown within a company, well, we might not have a company afterwards. So King puts a separate chapter to it. Then there's shareholders' remuneration. Again, again, the Companies Act is not overly prescriptive as to what we have in shareholders' remuneration. It just says you've got to disclose it. Now there needs to be policies. There needs to be remuneration committees. There has to be a whole lot more transparency than there used to be. Again, we see King 3 vastly extending the requirements of the Companies Act. Evaluation. The Companies Act doesn't say that you've got to evaluate a director. As far as the Companies Act is concerned, a director can sit there for life and draw a salary. There's no, no breach of the Companies Act entailed in that. Now what the King 3 is saying is saying, we've got to look and say, are these directors progressing? Is it a good idea that they should move on? What more could they do for the company if they were better trained, etc.? Then we have business rescue. The Companies Act also has a chapter on business rescue. And we're going to look at that in a lot more detail later. What King 3 is saying is that business rescue might well be a proposition for companies that become financially distressed. Now, we've got to admit that not all companies can be successful. Some of them fail. And in the past, there was only one route for a company when it got into financial distress, and that was to liquidate it. Business rescue is a new concept whereby we are looking to say, if we gave a company a breather, could it survive? Could it come make a big comeback? It should be given that opportunity. So we have chapters within both the Companies Act and within King 3 that help us achieve that. So now we say it is intended that the King Code should apply to all entities and all entities should be encouraged to report when they do not implement corporate governance procedures as recommended by the King 3 report. So now let's go into what's required of the Board of Directors and that is contained in Chapter 2 of the King 3 report. This chapter again and again refers to other chapters where principles are elaborated in more detail. So one has to get the structure right. So we know this. Companies are headed up by the Board of Directors and they should direct and govern the, and control the company. Straightforward. Nothing too much changed there. But we have to look at the role and functions of the board 
and the committees to which it delegates. That is a very important aspect of new governance. The board is not expected to do everything. The board is supposed to identify issues and if they warrant it, they're supposed to delegate it down to a committee of the board which will go and do the job more thoroughly. The composition and evaluation of the board is important. One has to look at how it's progressing. And if it's not making any progress, one has to look at substantial change. One has to look at the board appointment process. This is not just a case of nudge, nudge, here's my pal from school, I'd like to give him a job as a director. One has to go through an appointment process which says, hey, is this the type of director that we actually want? Can we afford them? What are they going to do? Then we've also got to get involved in director development. We cannot simply assume that a person who has made it to the board of directors is now fully matured in the world of commerce with nothing more to learn. In fact, we want to see what the board of directors is doing with their own progression and their own continuing professional development. And then, very importantly, when we look at remuneration, we've got to have a transparent and open process which gets us to try and answer the question, are we paying a fair market value for what we are receiving from the Board of Directors? So, the Board is the focal point and it is the custodian and guardian of corporate governance. So, in summary, the Board is responsible for ensuring the continued success of a company and it is guided by the company's charter. It is the link between management and the shareholders and, in fact, the stakeholder as well. Very importantly, the board should have a full board meeting at least four times a year. Many companies in the past only used to have a board meeting once a year and then the CEO would just be let loose to run the company for the following year. No more. Then, the board should appreciate that strategy, risk, performance and sustainability are inseparable. Notice, very important in King 3, this word sustainability coming to the fore. Will the company be here and prosperous tomorrow, making a contribution to society? So, in, to achieve this, the board should inform and approve the company's strategy and satisfy itself that there are business plans in place and that they are not encumbered by unexamined risk. In doing so, one has to look at key risk areas. Now in the past companies bumbled along until there was a disaster and then everybody said why didn't they think about that? Well the very idea of a risk committee today is to say let's look into the future and see what could possibly go wrong there. Then the board ensures that strategy will result in sustainable outcome and considers that sustainability is a business opportunity. So, in the, some people, when they look at King 3, they say, oh my goodness, this is just slowing the company down. We're having to get in more and more procedures, consider more and more things. Other companies are saying, hey, if we are seen to have great governance and we are a sustainable company, then people might want to do business with us more. The board should provide leadership based on ethical foundations. Now, ethics is dealt with in Chapter 1 of the King Code. Now, remember, very importantly, the Companies Act doesn't have a chapter on ethics. For the first time in the Constitution of Commerce, we see it coming in through the King Code, where they examine what ethical behavior is all about. The Board should be ensure that the company is seen as being a responsible corporate citizen. That's a long way from a hundred years ago where a company was merely judged on how much profit it made. And then the board should make sure that the company's ethics are managed effectively. And that's quite difficult because an ethical behavior has to permeate not only the board of directors, but has got to go right through the company. And, you know, some people have never looked at what is ethical behavior. They have no appreciation of what it's about. It's no use to simply have a board being ethical when the rest of your company is carry on as if nothing has ever happened.
The board must make sure that the company has an effective and independent audit committee. Now, audits used to be a quite a pally pally arrangement. We sometimes had auditors and directors who were friends for life and all that good stuff and used to play golf every weekend. Now we're saying, look, an audit's a very expensive matter. And we have to look and say, is it an effective spend and is it doing its job properly? And there's got to be a whole committee which reviews the audit process. We can't just leave everything to the auditor. Then, when we get to chapter 4, we start looking at the governance of risk. And the whole idea of looking into the future, looking at your company and saying, what could go wrong? That's very important. The board should be responsible for its information technology. That's all outlined in chapter 5, where they go and tell you how to look after your IT technology. Again, there are different levels at which this could happen. So your risk committee looking at IT in a major bank would be a far more substantial risk committee than somewhere where their reliance on computers is far less. The board should ensure that the company complies with all applicable laws, non-binding rules, codes and standards. Now, if you're going to be a director of a company, this is probably the most important aspect of it. The King Code is saying you've got to go out there, find not only the law but also the codes and standards that govern your business. And then you've got to make sure that you comply with them. If you don't comply with them, King is not going to punish you. But if you don't comply with them and ultimately the company sustains financial loss, then one comes to talking about damages, claims being brought against directors in terms of Section 76 of the Companies Act. And the fact that you may have not complied with Chapter 6 of the King Code would show that you are negligent and have not fulfilled your duties as a director. And that can have massive implications way down the track if it came to a delictual suit for damages. The board should ensure that there is an effective risk-based internal audit. All the time the company is supposed to have a self-assessment process there which is anticipating what could go wrong and trying to pick out those problems now, some say that is totally negative and it can destroy any enthusiasm to do business. And yeah, sometimes it seems like that. But what the internal audit process is supposed to be able to do is to say, identify a risk, then manage the risk. If you can't manage the risk, then we have to make a decision as to whether we carry on in that line of business. But the first prize is actually to manage the risk, not to simply run away from the problem. The board must appreciate that the stakeholders' perceptions of the company are of great importance. We're starting to see this almost daily now, where stakeholders are looking at companies and saying, sorry, not good enough. I don't want to do business with you. And the company's got to appreciate that. Now, we've seen this a lot recently in the Oak Bay debacle. Nobody is saying what the Guptas have done in Oak Bay is illegal. But the stakeholders' perceptions of the company are that there's something morally not right. So the stakeholders are no longer doing business there. And that sort of stuffs up the whole arrangement. Chapter 9 looks at the company's integrated report. This is the communication that goes between the company and its stakeholders and shareholders, which is measuring how business is done, what's the cost of doing business, etc. That's all outlined in Chapter 9, which is where a company is self-evaluating itself on how it's doing in its whole cost to society of making profit. Then Chapter 11 is again the system of internal controls. Are they working? Are they operating? Are they reviewed and updated? Again, to find the risk. So hopefully we can find a remedy against the risk and carry on with business. The board and its directors must act in the best interests of the company at all times. That is, to a large extent, a repeat of what is in the Companies Act, 
The board should consider business rescue proceedings where things are not working out. Again, that is a repeat of the Companies Act, where one goes back to the Companies Act and says, we're in financial distress, perhaps we can save the company, perhaps not. There is a procedure there that we should use. What one mustn't do is simply say, oh, I'm in trouble here, and run for the Insolvency Act. So that's a little summary of what the King 3 Code is all about. What is important is that it is the link between Section 76 and the Companies Act and how you are supposed to behave as a director of a company. More to follow.